Hey everyone, Pastor Mike here. Do you ever think about your life and wonder, what's the point? Sometimes we're sitting in a classroom or another Monday at work or another day raising kids or going through life and we wonder, what's the point and what's the purpose? In the midst of the daily grind and the struggle, it's hard to see what God is doing and sometimes it's hard to sense that God is even there at all. And that's why I want you to check out my latest sermon series called, What's the Point? It's a deep dive into the biblical book of Esther, a book of the Bible that, interestingly enough, never once mentions the name of God. And yet, behind the scenes, God is working powerful things, good purposes for the good of his people. You can check out this sermon series right now on Time of Grace with Pastor Mike Novotny, wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And of course, you can watch it at timeofgrace.org. Do you ever feel small? I don't mean physically small. I'm six foot five, so I don't feel physically small very often. But there are plenty of times where I feel small in terms of significance. When I work really hard on a project and I think that it's gonna make a difference in people's lives, but then it falls flat. Or when I pour a lot of time and energy into a relationship and I think that we're starting to get really close, but then I find out that I don't matter to that person quite as much as they matter to me. Those are things that make me feel small. I'm sure you can relate to that. I'm sure you felt these moments where you feel like just a number, like a face in the crowd, where you wonder, am I significant? Do I matter? God's word has something to say about those moments. It actually has a lot to say But I want to focus specifically on two ways that God's word answers that question, do I matter? The first comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10. It says, we are God's handiwork. Malcolm Gladwell tells the story of a painting called Vase with Carnations. It's a painting that sat largely ignored in the corner of a storeroom in a museum for decades. Because even though it had the signature of Vincent van Gogh in the corner, nobody believed it was actually authentic. It wasn't quite as polished as his other paintings. It didn't look quite the same. So everyone assumed that it was a forgery. Well, then one day they found out that it actually was painted by Vincent van Gogh himself. And now all of a sudden the value of that painting shot up into the millions. The painting itself hadn't changed at all. It's exactly the same painting it was the day before, but now it was worth infinitely more, not because it was more beautiful or because the brush strokes were better or the colors were more vibrant. It was worth more simply because of the one who painted it. Paul, the writer of that passage from Ephesians chapter two, says that we, are God's handiwork. That means that you are crafted not just by the hands of a famous artist like Vincent van Gogh, you're made by the same hands that placed the stars in the sky. You're made by the same hands that carved the Grand Canyon and that sculpted the Rocky Mountains. God made you with his own hands. And that means that your value couldn't be higher. You matter to God because he made you with his own hands. Jesus tells us that God has every single one of the hairs on your head numbered. That's how closely God pays attention to you. That's how much you matter to him. He cares about even the most insignificant details of your life because of how significant you are to him. That's not the only way that God shows us our value. One way you can assess the value of something is by who made it. But another way you can assess the value of something is by what someone is willing to pay for it. See, if you took that painting, Vase with Carnations, and you totaled up how much the canvas and the paints and the frame cost, you wouldn't come anywhere near that million dollar price tag. But that's not how the value of a work of art is assessed. It's not based on how much the total of its parts cost, 
it's based on what someone is willing to pay for it. In 1 Peter chapter 1, God tells us this, For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed, but with the precious blood of Christ. That's the price that God was willing to pay for you. He didn't pay a price that can be measured in silver or gold or any other kind of currency. He paid for you with the priceless blood of his own son. That means that your value in God's sight is infinite. So do you matter? Are you significant? I would say so. And so would God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, so often we doubt our worth and our significance. These things in our lives come up and they make us feel small and insignificant. But you show us in your word that we matter to you because you paid for us with your own son's blood and because you're the one who made us. We ask that you would help us to see our value to you and that you would bring us comfort through that. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen.